Um, all right, Lightyear, <clears throat> the newest Pixar movie. Legendary space ranger Buzz Lightyear embarks on an intergalactic adventure alongside ambitious recruits Izzy, Moe, Darby, and his robot companion Socks. As this motley crew tackles their toughest mission yet, they must learn to work together as a team to escape the evil Zerg and his uh, robot army that are never far behind. Uh, what is this? No, what number movie is this for Pixar? I should fucking I should have probably looked that up beforehand. Whatever, uh, other Pixar movie. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Let me see. I actually I do have it in front of me. The number number twenty six, movie number twenty six for Pixar, uh, directed by Angus McLean. Um, his first movie, but he's been an animator for Pixar ever since A Bug's Life, so a long time. He co-directed Finding Dory, mm-hmm. and he was a partial director of the animated Buzz Lightyear series. So I will say that. But his first solo director uh, role and writing job for Pixar after working on. Um, a ton of Pixar movies over the years. Uh, the other man, writer's the guy who directed Onward, I believe, too, or wrote Onward. I forget. They're actual writer. Um, bunch of recognizable voices in this. Uh, Chris Evans plays Buzz Lightyear. That's a controversy we're not going to talk about. Uh, people were upset that it <laughs> wasn't. Meaningless. Which Tim Allen like, yeah. didn't care. Tim Allen's like, yeah, great. Um, yeah. James Brolin uh, voices Emperor Zerg. Kiki Palmer. Taika Waititi's in this movie. Um Uzo, Uzo Aduba's in this movie as well. Um, yeah, it, it's... Bill Hader. It's... Yes, Bill Hader. Um, it is a movie for a very short amount of time. It is a yes. movie that is set in the Pixar universe. It is... What is I forget I forget what the what title it's a, okay so the, I'll read off Wikipedia they explain a little further a framing device explains the film was a favorite of Andy. And that the Buzz Lightyear toy he received in 1995 was based on it. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that. Yeah, no, I don't believe that Andy that Andy watched this movie and understood what the fuck was happening. He was like, "How old is he?" Which is, that's, that's not. That's not me saying I don't like this movie. I'm just saying I don't think Andy watched this movie. And got the, I, I I don't know, Mike. Andy, how old is Andy in the first Toy Story? I actually, don't remember. Um, he was like he was like probably like ten. 11? Okay, so he turned he turned 17 in 2013. That can't be right. In 2012. And Toy Story was 1998. Oh, right? no. Wait, wait, wait. Toy Story 3 was, 20, was what, summer 2010? He, he, he was born in the early 90s. So he was like, whatever. He was like, one being he's like seven, eight. <laughs> I just looked up. How old was Andy in Toy Story 1? It said 57, which uh, I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> isn't correct. That just, that just can't be. Um, that just can't be true. Uh, 10 years old in Toy Story 2. Whatever. Fucking point being. Six, Andy years, old. Was Six in- years old he was watching that movie? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, was Andy watching Interstellar? It's basically like a dinner. It's a, it's a simpler Interstellar. It's like time dilation, all that. I don't know. Just like, it's kind of funny to me. It makes again. It's it's a stupid nitpick critique. We talked about nitpicking earlier, but I I chuckle at that. At the end of the movie, I'm like, Andy watched this movie and like knew mm-hmm. what happened. Also, like, I mean, what his mom watches. I mean, we know his dad wasn't like. I think his dad passed when he was young. I think that's like the theory. There's like no dads yeah. in Pixar like ever. Um, so I I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny. It's like this is this is not like a kiddie like Space Ranger movie. Um point being nitpick aside has nothing to do with our score of the movie i like this movie i think it is right in i think the middle of pixar movies maybe no i would say middle it's very middle pixar which is disappointing because i think everything here could have been really awesome but it is and i've this is not an original take because this has been a very oft used critique of the movie it's a super paint by number story um, it's simple. It's nothing crazy. There's an emotional beat in the movie. It's a there's a classic Pixar emotional scene. When you start to realize that they're just getting older. It it kind of just feels like up like the uh, the up montage, just a little different. Yeah. Um, I I think her is great as Buzz. The movie looks fucking amazing. Looks incredible. Uh, but it just doesn't. I don't know it doesn't do a. It doesn't do anything to really push it in a direction that makes it separate from other Pixar movies on that tier. I gave it an 86. I really enjoyed it. Like I had a lot of fun with it. Did not have like a bored moment start to finish. 
sounds great, looks great, fun story. I think it's I think it's it's a it, it could have been more paint by numbers. Um, the whole time dilation thing, I think, is a neat little angle. I like the socks character. I like everything here. It just isn't Pixar great. It doesn't reach the Cocos, the Toy Stories. Uh, it just doesn't hit that level. The Incredibles, the Ratatouilles. Um, good. Uh, 86, not great. It just doesn't hit that great level. But I really did enjoy this movie. Um, and also, if you're if you're like a Disney, if you're like a Disney Parks fan, the the Space Mountain thing that's being built is kind of cool. Even though there's now people, you may not know this, you know, like a Parks guy, people are pissing and shit in their pants now because they think that they're going to retheme Space Mountain to be like Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, people are, people are so fucking mad about it. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, what did you what did you think? What did you give it? I think the best word to describe the movie is just the word solid. Like, <laughs> it's like right on that upper edge of like an adequate movie. And like... It's very difficult to to sort of describe because I think that like there's nothing exceptional about the movie outside of the animation, which is like almost a given with Pixar. It's like even their shitty movies are pretty well animated, um, but it's fine. And like at like I feel like the, my biggest critique is the same one that's already kind of like been used a trillion times, which is like I feel like they could have been really creative with this movie because like you're going out into space, you're doing something that's like not really in the usual zone of of Pixar outside of like what, like Wally, like do something crazy. And like, it was very, very just okay. And I think it's just hard because every, it's a hard movie to kind of critique because like every problem I think of with this movie, and I wrote this down because every single problem I can think of with the movie, I can immediately think of an answer for, like I would think of a problem and then something that disproves why it was a problem in the first place. Like very, like the, the overall critique of like, it doesn't take any risks because it's formulaic. Right. But at the same time, it's a Pixar kids movie, right? Like you don't expect it to go mm-hmm. fucking do something wild and nuts. But at the same time, after that, the movie is trying to appeal to adults in a way. Right. Because if, if you were 10 years old, when toy story one came out, you're 37 now. So like, there is an element of like, they're trying to get a certain market of adult fans of uh, now adult fans of toy story. So like, I think it's easier for me to just focus on what I think really worked for the movie and for me, I think the humor worked really well with the core four grouping um, like that uh, Buzz Lightyear and those four. You know, well, not four kids, but yeah, I guess there's three his three Space Ranger pals. Um, I think they worked really well. I think Socks is funny. Like he's the prerequisite creature that every Marvel or no, every Disney movie needs. Every, every Pixar movie needs like a cute creature. I think Socks was solid. I went to Target earlier today after I watched it. And like Socks was the number one thing on the Lightyear standee. Yeah, like, everyone Sox was all about yeah. Socks. He's the number one guy, which, by the way, a sox robot, like, it's just so close to sex robot. So I can think about every time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. And I think the callbacks were good to the Bugger Sings and bits from Toy Story and everything like that. Um, yeah. The Are You Mocking Me stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are You Mocking Me? Not Today. All that shit. Like, like yeah. Like, it's like, it gives you that nostalgia tummy feeling, which, like, you, you expect going into it. Um, I think that this movie would have been one of the better if not the best straight to streaming Disney plus movie, I don't think it's in the must see of theatrical releases. I'm like, you got to go watch this in a theater. It's awesome. Like this is one, like you should, I think I would recommend anyone. Like if you're comfortable waiting to go watch some Disney plus do that. Um, It's like, and this is the, I was trying to think like, who's the most on the cusp of like serviceable quarterback in the NFL. I think it's the Ryan Tannehill of movies. It's like, it's like, it's, it's not going to usually directly lose you a game, but like it's, it's, it works. Um, so for me, I ended up on a 76 out of a hundred for it, and, which is 10 points lower than you. Um, but like, I, I just think that they really could have done something way cooler. And like, I don't, I didn't like anticipating every single beat of the movie. Um, and with some of the stuff, like the time dilation stuff, like that makes me think like you, you know, this wasn't entirely made for kids because kid doesn't know what the fuck is going no. on. They're, they're, they're right. depending on an adult to explain it to them. So like, that's where like, I'm sort of split on how to digest it as a kids versus an adults movie. Um, but I think again, the humor was w- worked, which is what Pixar is always usually, or I'd say, yeah, usually good at. Um, and I think the characters are okay. Um, could have used more characters outside of Chris Evans as buzz. Um, and just, I wish they, they could have done something very different. And also I'm super surprised we didn't get like a, a what do you call it? Um, Tim Allen cameo at some point. Like I thought like yeah, for sure. Really, they, he actually so so Angus McLean said I think I said like I didn't want people to think of a better movie referencing the first like he didn't want to like overdo the reference because they really yeah. aren't I thought we might see like a Rex like a 
Yeah. I don't know. Like, not my fucking Mr. Potato. I thought we actually, actually, Mr. Potato might have made sense, like, in the background somewhere. It's a toy. Yeah. But like, I thought you might get, like, a Woody something or other. I was actually very surprised with that. I'm not complaining. But I, I actually kind of like that. Like, I like that they really left it, like, in its own universe. And it makes sense because it's a movie in that world. So it's, like, it'd be kind of weird if, like, fucking Woody, like, Woody's Roundup was going to be in, like, the Lightyear movie. That's, like, that's like a reference within a reference within a reference. Um, like, what are the claw aliens? Like, those would have definitely – I'm surprised they didn't make a cut. Yeah, I could have – yeah, yeah. So I'm a little surprised. Again, not a complaint. I just, like, there. I was expecting yeah. more – um, and I, I think in a way it's good. It wasn't cause it, it would have been distracting. I yes. like the karate chop stuff again, the sayings, you know, like it, it's, it's all there. I think the ship at the end, um, being like his, his ship that he gets packaged in, um, when he sold in stores. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, again, I, I, I like the story. I think the time dilation stuff is neat. I think the, the twist on Zerg is cool. Obviously like they joke in toy story Two that Zerg is his father. And he does say he's like dad, like he does say that, like, that's funny. Um, I, I thought it was a nice little twist on it because uh, there was a point where I was like, are they really just going to make this like a fucking alien that shows up? Um, it, it has a nice Pixar message. Nothing like crazy. Um, nothing like crazy different. It's not even like that, like in your face. Um, but it, it, it tugs at the heartstrings in some spots, especially the montage yeah. when everyone's getting older and he's just still doing his fucking thing. Um, there just isn't like a, like an insane amount of things to say about it. Again, it's very, very solid. It just kind of comes down to, we're going to talk about Pixar tier. It's like, where do you tier it with other Pixar movies? For me, um, so I have it in 86. It's just below A Bug's Life, uh, right up with Incredibles 2. I think Onward, Turning Red, um, Finding Dory, which he obviously co-directed. Uh, so I, I have in kind of that realm. Uh, and you said 76, right? Yeah. You would have it for you. It's a it's a little lower. You'd have it uh, with Bugs Life, Brave, Monster University, which I think is fair. I think there's a clear, at least for us, there's a clear drop off of another tier of movies, um, which is yes, oh yeah, not landed. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, I also I would like this to keep going. I would like this would be a fun animated like adventure series on Disney Plus. Yeah, bring um, back the, actually, the animated series itself. The one with Patrick Warburton was awesome. I remember watching that all the time yeah. as a kid. I think that they they could they they could turn this into like a fun different kind of thing, um, for like a Disney Plus series because again I think it looks it looks great it's a, it's a cool looking movie yeah gorgeous um and again you know you take stuff like this it's you know it's 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 that same argument that like why anime doesn't translate to real life because you can't do things that anime does um that's yeah. you know the same here you can have a fun kind of different space movie with this and bring in random different shit especially with like time travel and time dilation like they could do some fun stuff here and they're clearly setting something up it's a prequel or not a prequel but it's it's a it's an origin story um i did think by the way did you think when he comes out of the cryogen thing it, it kind of reminded me of um like captain america like first avenger yeah vibes a little yeah bit. that might have been purposeful mm -hmm. we uh we talked about it earlier but i think that a uh um, a gritty Western Woody movie being the next one up on, yeah. the, on the on the origin stories would be sick. How, I would love that. Buzz translates well to a real life, like a real quote unquote real life character, and I don't mean live action, like real life in that universe. How would you do Woody? Because Woody is such a doofy looking toy. He's like a really badass cowboy in that yellow flannel shirt, and like he comes out. There's no Tom Hanks voicing him. It's the same sort of deal. Um, he comes out, and he's like. Wagwan, it's it's me, Woody, and it's Chet Hanks voicing <laughs> hardcore Woody, the the cur white Caribbean gangster uh, cowboy. I would love it. He just brutally throws uh, Stinky Pete's axe into his fucking forehead, just splits his <laughs> forehead good. open. Man, it would be awesome. Like I think, like uh, maybe once that goes in like a hundred years, once this goes like uh, becomes a public property, someone will do like the Winnie the Pooh thing. With this, with Woody, and just like turn him into like a badass cowboy. Do that. Was there? Um, and you know what's another thing that I didn't even didn't even think about? Was there no John Ratzenberger cameo? Ooh, good question. He, I don't think so. He, I think John. Uh, what do you call it? Bill Hader? Was the big one? Yeah, because he he does voice. He's had a he's had a role in each of Pixar's twenty two films. Huh. Though was he in? Was he in Onward? I don't know. Because he's always he's he's a, a voice cameo. Yeah. Huh. It's like that's like difficult to put together. I listened for it too, because I was like, I was like, I know I'm gonna hear it. They, there was a Wilhelm scream pretty early on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think again, 
it's incredibly solid. And I, I, I don't even, there's nothing really bad about it at all. Like I don't, I don't think anything bad. And it's funny. It's like some, like people will note this about us. And I think they're completely spot on. We typically take a more negative side to all of our reviews. We just do which is what happens. Um, but like, this is one of those ones where like, I can't even say there's anything bad about it. Just nothing that really makes it great. Great. Like it's super fucking enjoyable. Like I, I I'll probably, I, I will at some point, I'm sure if this is like on somewhere, if like, I just want to watch something fun, like this is something that I would toss on in the background. Like it, it's a fun adventure movie. I the, by the sandwich thing made me laugh. By the way, I, I yeah, the sandwich thing was funny. Yeah, the sandwich thing. Um, them just the, giving him shit. It's, yeah, I think like um, the only things I would say bad about it is like it's a, a little bit beyond the predictability of it. Like it can get a little boring at times, but like even then, like you're kind of satiated by like the color and the animation style. So like it's 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 not even like that's like a glaring weakness. Yeah, no, I I think it's I think it's I think it's a good Pixar movie. I don't think it's great, which is obviously tough because the great Pixar movies aren't just like good animated movies; they're like great movies, <laughs> like they're fucking best picture nominee movies. So it's tough and it'll live up to that. The Pixar standard is is a very hard thing to live up to. Um, and lately, like I don't know, if it's because it's like how many times can you make a great fucking movie? You know, the the more recent ones, there have been things that kind of you know don't fall in line with the best. I, I still like, for example, I, I think soul was fucking fantastic. Um, yeah. I, I think soul is a movie that it, it does get hype. I mean, obviously it does. So I'm not saying it's underrated by any means, but it's a movie that I do think will fall in line a little more as a, as a more appreciated. Remember it came out on fucking streaming and it yeah. didn't get like the big, it didn't get oh, the big. Yeah, that was Disney Plus. So that was the best Disney Plus. Was it? It was Disney mind. Plus, right? It wasn't just. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it was COVID. It was. It was during. It was a COVID movie. Yep. Um, and that was one where it's like I think if that had been theaters, it would have been a little. It would have hit more than it did because I I do think it deserves, like the credit that it gets. Um, there's another movie coming out in next year. That's their next one, Elemental, uh, which comes out in 2023. There's really not much on that one. Um. Another another first time. Uh, no, the guy who directed. Um, excuse me, I looked this up earlier. He directed Good Dinosaur. Gets another shot. Whew. Yep. Second That's shot after Good Dinosaur. Yeah. Good Dinosaur is tough. We'll we'll, we'll get there. We'll we'll talk yeah, about. Yeah, we'll talk about that. So that's I mean that that's our review. That there's not a ton to say. Um, next week we're doing Elvis, which I just could not be more excited for. The Boz um, Man. I, I really do hope it's good. I, I really hope I like it. Um, and I'm not a I'm not a Boz apologist. I don't love Great Gatsby by any stretch of the imagination. I obviously love Romeo and Juliet. Man, I'm looking at the post. The poster rips, man. I fucking man, love. Man, man. I like how you're saving Australia for last. I don't. I don't. The funny thing is, I say I don't hate Australia. But I think I think there's a weird uh, Australian Gatsby. I think I have it the same exact score, or it's close. Let's look. I have one point above, but I I like Australia a little more because I think Great Gatsby had such hype because of, like it's a, it's the book and like, everyone like, read, like, read it. it. It's, yeah, so like I don't know. Like I was like, ah, and it's Leo, and not that Hugh not that Hugh Jackman's anything to sneeze at Nicole Kid, but it I don't know. Australia's like goofy. It's a goofy fucking movie, right? Yeah, so long. But I love Moulin Rouge and, and I love, 10 hours long. Yeah, yeah. I love Romeo and Juliet. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Again, I can't wait because it's going to be me and Chris just like, I, unless this is like really, really blows our fucking socks off. Like it's going to be me and Chris shitting all over Bosler Lerman for making nothing but terrible movies. And then you having to defend that weirdo you Australian. Like Moulin Rouge, though. Moulin Rouge is solid. Yeah, I think I gave it like an yeah. 80 or something. And then, and then the week after that, uh, what movie comes out that I said we weren't going to probably talk too much about? Oh, Minions! I mean, no offense to Minions: Rise of Gru. I like. I, I mean, no. And then maybe we can talk about Spiderhead, which is a we're movie. We're talking about oh, Spiderhead okay. and Hostel. I can't wait for you to watch that because that movie sets the record for the most times the the word or the name Jeff has been said in a movie. Period. Like you watch the movie start to finish, they say Jeff. I'm not even exaggerating. Like 200 times, it's incredible. I, mean, I, I was gonna, I was planning on watching it tonight when we were all done. I may have to turn it off then. Um, <laughs> it's have to incredible state of mind. Um, yeah, we'll do Hustle, Spiderhead, and I mean we're gonna talk about Minions Rise of Gru, but like, come on, I'm so fucking sick of the Minions, man. 
We, we, we already did Dominion. All people want to do is fucking take down Marvel and take down Star Wars and DC. There's too much com. Enough of the fucking minions, dude. Yeah. Is any you Rise know what? Pickle Me was so good, and we just get that's, further that's, away from it. That's what's frustrating about it. Yeah, it's like that original movie on its own, very good, and then just spawn this. Like kids bought so many of those minion toys that there's like we need to make a trillion of these and sell even more. It's like the most corporatized fucking like, if, original property ever made. You you just say like, what if you just walked around? This 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 sounds like the least funny bit of all time. I just want to note that. What if you're like, yo, do you see that new Michelle Yeoh banger? It's like, what is it? Oh, everything ever all once now. Minions Rise of Gru. Minions Rise of Gru. Yeah. <laughs> this movie. Gee, was I wonder what type delayed, of character she way. plays in that. This Let's movie see. is long delayed. Yeah. This is, this is a COVID delay. 